Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp and the second part of the video for the exercise of or the recap of sorts for the PCA analysis. Now, in the first video, there was the task given and in this video, there will be the solution given. So I put together everything in a neat little script. And I have to say that, well, this is one of the few scripts I have that have many more comment, comment lines than actual code lines that are code that actually executes. But in a way, it's a good as well. So what you need to do first is to go to the GitHub web page and download the data. So you went to the GitHub web page and downloaded the data. So these are the Maasai goats and the Valdostana goats here. And also what you need is the Plink executable file in your working directory. Now there are also different solutions how to do this or deal with Plink, but let's go for the most straightforward one right now. So you have the Plink executable file for your operating system in your working directory. Because obviously if you use Windows, you need the Windows executable file. If you use Linux, then the Linux executable file or Mac, then the Mac executable file for Plink. So this is the overall setup. Also, you need to identify or remember where your data is saved because then you need to set the working directory. Now I will go through this workflow in a somewhat quicker fashion here, because for all of these uh, parts or all of the steps in this workflow, there are separate videos already on Genomics Bootcamp and I don't want to repeat myself too much, but still I would like to have a video here or basically a workflow that describes the entire process. So in case you need help, you don't need to search the entire website or the entire channel, but you have the main points concentrated here. So now we go on and set the working directory. So this is obviously different for you. And it is the location where you save your files and where the Plink executable file is also located. Now here I have a few references, namely the papers, two papers that are directly connected to this data set, the Cholli et al. 2018 and Bertolini et al. 2018. So both of them published in GSE, which is an open access journal. So you are welcome to read them. And also there is a full data set of the adaptive goats on the Dryad website. And this is then also linked here. But of course you can find it also from the journals. For our purposes, we will use the Valdostana and Maasai goats, as told in the previous video. Now, the first step is to merge the two data set. Here, well, already there is a lot of variation possible. And actually, I was thinking how hard I want to make this exercise, because depending on the input data set, it could be that... Uh, well, we could start at the final report level, and then there is a whole lot of other things that need to be done before we actually get to this uh, stage. But at the end, I decided for a straight, fairly straightforward uh, solution where we have just the two breeds in a two separate Plink files. But, well, I still put it uh, as a note here that uh, there could be a large variation in the format and the quality of the input data sets. So what you see here is actually a best case scenario that uh, honestly speaking, rarely ever happens. So when you do a merging for any other data sets, you have to be very careful and to see if everything works properly. There could be various errors or warnings and where, while some of these could be somewhat ignored, others are very critical. So you need to be aware of what you're doing and uh, do the merging in a very careful way. And of course, if you encounter some obstacles, you need to solve them. The merging was discussed in uh, several videos on this channel. And I link here the, well, the one that is the most relevant in case you need a detailed explanation of the process 
So there is one that is called merging genotype data with Plink. And that goes into more detail about data merging with Plink. Now, for our purposes here, what we have are binary pet files. So we just use the system command as always and start the Plink program. And with the dash dash B file, we load in the Valdostana goats with the dash dash B merge. Basically we merge the Maasai goats to the Valdostana goats. Here it's very important to also specify the dash dash CHR dash set command or option for Plink because this just shows that the goats actually have 29 autosomes, so this should be correctly considered. And we make a binary pet file with the dash dash make dash bed command, and well, we produce a merged data set for the two breeds. The second step you have to do is quality control. Again, there was quite a bit told already about quality control also on this channel. So I will not go into this into too much detail, but if you are interested or want to brush up some knowledge regarding this subject, then there is the Genomics in Practice SNP Data Quality Control with Plink video, or this is the title that you can watch. And this, this has a lot more about quality control. Still, I include it a few things here so that you are not entirely without information, but still, if you are interested in more details, I would really suggest to look up this video. Anyway, so here, if you do it yourself, then uh, of course, depending on the quality control criteria you set, then the results could be slightly different in terms of how many individuals, but mostly how many SNPs you get out of such a quality control. The second thing I would like to also mention that well, while you can use basically all quality control criteria, because this is a multi-breed data set, I would re be really careful about the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium check in this particle data set or in a multi-breed data sets in general. So, but anyway, so what you normally do is uh, you check for the missingness per individual. So this is done with the dash dash mind option and using the 10% kind of uh, cutoff value or 0 0.1 cutoff value in relative terms is a very standard one. Also, you use the dash dash geno option also with the 0 0.1 indicating that this removes SNPs with more than 10% missingness rate. You could use also the dash dash muff option that removes SNPs with a minor early frequency and also, well, the dash dash autosome that extracts only autosomal SNPs or autosomal chromosomes. And so this one you could all put into a single line and, uh, well, obviously you could uh, vary these parameters a little bit, but well, the ones uh, I'm, using, I'm using here are quite standard. And again, we are creating a new output file that I call after QC here, that is also a binary pet file that will be the input for the BCA analysis. The third part of this process is already the principal component analysis. Now here also there are a lot of options. Well, there is a bunch of software that does this. I mean, my go-to solution is it to do it with Plink, but if you do it with anything else, that should be also fine because, well, we are just doing actually the same process regardless of the software. Actually, there might be slight differences between the resulting plots, uh, well, depending on the number of SNPs that actually survive the quality control. But most importantly, I think in case you or the software uses some other relationship matrix that then it, it transforms into a PCA plot, then there might be some differences between the resulting plots. But anyway, so we should see more or less the same, uh, same setup. Actually, my go-to solution is Plink for the PCA analysis 
also because it's very easy to do actually what you really need to do is just to specify the dash dash pca in the blink line and basically that does the entire job for you so basically you just run that line and then everything is done and the last step in this process is the visualization of the results because well the dash dash pca computes the results in plink but is still in the text format so you want to have it in the picture format or you have want to create a figure so you can do this again multiple ways you can do a very simple plot or you can do a very sophisticated and beautifully constructed plot for example, with tidyverse and ggplot. What you need to do first is, of course, load the data, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors that are created with Plink. Then later on, you could uh, create or compute the proportion of variation captured by each vector. Well, this is an optional step, but certainly looks nice on the graph. And also it gives some nice uh, additional information. And then you plot the data or plot the results with the ggplot in R. But again, if you want to use any other software or any other plotting solution, that's also fine. So I ran the entire script here and let's scroll through the log files briefly so you see that what I got and perhaps you can compare with your solutions or situations. So the first step, this was this merging. Here we still had the Valdostana goats and the Maasai goats separate, but afterwards, well, we merged them together and got 44 samples with 53,000 and some extra SNPs for our data set, input data set for the quality control. Well, the quality control was performed also with Plink, and then this log file gives us basically the parameters that we were using and also gives details about how many variants were removed during the quality control. In this setting, so if, if we just looked at the 10% missingness, there were no samples removed and then a relatively small number of variants removed due to various steps still remaining with a bit more than 50,000 markers. In the next step, there was the PCA performed with the dash dash PCA option in Plink, which created us or basically resulted into this dot eigenval and eigenvec files that were then printed on the hard disk. And then these files were then read in with the visualization part. And then, well, here I have the tidyverse with the ggplot and, and, and the PCA plot was created. And at the end, so this is how the PCA plot looks like. So we see a number of dots on this, uh, on this graph. Well, not really dots, but dots for the Maasai goat and the uh, little triangles for the Valdostana goat. And uh, what we also see that these are two separate clusters but the Maasai goats seem to be much closer to each other compared to the Valdostana goats. So because the Valdostanas are, although according to the principal component one, they are quite uniform, but already principal component two, a few animals separated. So there is certainly some kind of a substructure going on on this population or at least in these genotypes that we have at hand. But basically this was the end result or this was the end result we wanted to get to by creating this uh, PCA plot, which is a nice entry to any further analysis we would like to do perhaps with this data or well, any other data that you would be using. So I hope you liked this uh, small exercise, this recap of the entire process. As I mentioned before, this is a very useful exercise basically for anyone, but in particular for people who are getting into the genomic data analysis and they want to do some kind of a starting project. 
So this was it for today and for this two-part video series. Thank you for your time and have a really nice day.